Good afternoon. Thanks very much for this opportunity to speak to you. It's my privilege and it's my pleasure to do so. My name is Martin Berger and I am German, but I live in South Africa. Um, so we are a happy bunch of people and we are very diverse. And during the last day, I just thought about what, what is the thing that, that is uniting us on this conference. And of course, it's cultural diplomacy. And the question is that we all want to make a difference in our field of expertise. We all want to contribute to the society with our fields of expertise. In some kind, we want to be internationally excellent, but the key factor is to be locally relevant in our countries. And we're looking for tools to pursue cultural diplomacy in our field of expertise. Let me please introduce myself with just a few words uh, to make you understand why I moved to South Africa. I'm an artist. I'm a classical conductor. I worked in the last 11 years with some of the main orchestras in Germany and Europe. I'm specialized in choral music, so I work with some of the main choirs in Europe. I have expertise in boys' choirs, girls' choirs, chamber choirs, conducted some of the radio choirs here in Germany. Um, so I had a career as an artist. This changed in 2013 when the University of Stellenbosch in South Africa asked me to build up a program for young, talented color conductors in South Africa. South Africa is plenty of talent. Talent is unlimited in Africa. But international exchange should enable, on the one hand, to develop this potential on the other hand, I'm very convinced that we all can learn from Africa a lot if you really look at South Africa. If you want to say so, I'm kind of a cultural diplomat in my field of expertise, and I'm a product of German cultural diplomacy. So cultural identity, I believe, is crucial. It's a crucial factor within the process of globalization. Each formation of a cultural identity relies heavily on music. And I'm sure you all like music. You like different kinds of music, but you like music. Music is essential to our humanity. And as human beings, we are created to make music because our vocal cords are made more for singing than for speaking. Music facilitates access to large numbers of people and offers possibilities and the chance to connect ideas and form networks across society, across the globe. The most popular instrument in the world is the human voice. In the context of cultural diplomacy, as it is understood in this symposium, music can be seen as an important tool for dialogue and interaction. One of the most populous and popular possibilities in making music is choral singing. You won't believe it if you're German, but it is. In Germany and South Africa, a high percentage of the population is organized in choirs in Germany, it's 1.8 million people. But the potential value of this discipline for society has not yet been fully appreciated. Choral singing contributes to the welfare of a country in a variety of ways, by shaping individuals, generally by educating them to be critical thinkers, engaged citizens through the development of intellectual capital and human potential. These may serve as a tool to build cultural identity and a more just society. Please don't be irritated by this adapter. It will work. If you live in Africa, you, you learn to be patient and it, it, it works. <laughs> During the last few decades, Germany and Scandinavia and their successful concepts and programs were important role models and signposts in this field of expertise, which have influenced many other countries in the world, such as South Africa. However, many new questions have emerged during the past two decades. Globalization as a global cultural change resulting from cultural synthesis cannot be understood without taking into account the mechanisms that determine human cognitions, motivations, and decisions. Germany and South Africa have both seen major political changes in the last 25 years, the end of apartheid, the end of the Berlin Wall. So there's some kind of similarities. And both countries still have to redefine their concepts of cultural identity and multiculturalism. 
we can learn from Africa because multiculturalism has become part of South Africa's identity. It is functional as well as functioning. Hello? Looking at the situation in South Africa from this perspective can be advisable if you want to further develop societies in the Northern Hemisphere, as this can help us understand in what situations and under what conditions multiculturalism works as enriching a peaceful interchange. And how music, and especially choral music, can positively contribute to that. My university, Stellenbosch University, has a difficult history because it was created as a, as a white elitist university. And thank God that changed in 1994. And since 1994, we in, were in a kind of a transition. And this year is a landmark because the first year is where we have more non-white than white students. And it's the first year where the so-called freeborn generation, the generation who has never experienced apartheid, comes to universities. And the interesting time for me is that I can witness this fantastic opportunity, this dialogue between young people, and this creativeness which is offered in this country. Chorus singing can contribute to the welfare of a society. That is part of my life. That's what I believe. By shaping individuals generally, by educating them to be critical thinkers and engaged citizens through the development of intellectual capital and human potential. And I think it's a tool to build cultural identity and it's also a tool and it must be a tool to create a more just society. It's not only about art, it's about society. Choral singing is in many countries in the world a culture of everyday life. So that's what we can learn in, in Germany from South Africa, because in South Africa you go to a choir on a Tuesday evening, so you create art and you return at home. You never sing the whole week. But if you go to South Africa, people sing the whole day. They have rituals, they have possibilities to sing, they sing in groups. My students, if they have a break, they sit together and they, they improvise. They don't Im improvise classical music. They have all kinds of jazz standards, but they sing. Singing is part of their life. Singing can enrich the emotional and intellectual quality of being a human. Singing, because you use your body, can be a physical and spiritual blessing. Singing can be a basis for active involvement with, with, with music and from an intellectual point. Why? Because music touches us, us all. And the human voice is accessible to all free of charge. You don't have to pay. I think because of the struggles that this country has gone through, music can always be a, a refuge for so many people. And because it's, it touches you in, in a way that nothing, nothing else can really do. And it moves you and it can console you when, it's in, when you're in difficult times. And I think that's why. What is culture? Culture is, as we have heard, the sum of a communal beliefs, principles, traditions, behaviors, artifacts. That's true. But there's one thing I was missing during the whole day yesterday and today, because I'm an artist. Art is my life, music is my life. And from the point of view of an artist, I must tell you, at the very core of a culture, it's poetry, it's song, it's folklore, and it's stories. And in South Africa, each of these facets is embedded within 11 official national languages. Some have overlapping areas, this is true, but nine of them come from African roots, whereas two come from European roots. And what we experienced since 1994 is this struggle to come together. And this is kind of a role model and can be kind of a role model for the world. Looking at South Africa, that's the situation. That is these are all, all the languages spoken. So, and this is a blessing. Every, every child, every young man, every girl, every, every woman has the right to speak this language in this country. So we're really called a multilingual country. And even at a university, you have the right to, to, to write your exams in your mother tongue. This is a chance, but it's proved to be confusional. 
South African is vibrant. South Africa is multi-ethnic and multilingual. That is a thing, for example, we can see when, when we want to learn from, from the German perspective, uh, multi-ethnicity. And South Africa is a singing country. And the funny thing is all of these 11 languages have a rich singing tradition. With the end of apartheid in 1994, a history of nearly three centuries came to an end in which choral music and music education in South Africa provided a means of fostering segregation. Before 1994, ethnic groups and cultural identities were grouped together by the segregation laws of apartheid. And schools being divided into white and non-white became a principle for learners from the beginning of their educational life. The system of education was inherited from Western European countries, specifically the Netherlands and Great Britain. Schools from, for whites included choral music as a part of the core curriculum. Black South Africans who pursued an education were also encouraged to study choral music, but they were restricted to learning only Western European music. Choral music in South Africa was a means to foster segregation. Amongst the black population, choral music and traditional rights were used to strengthen the society and often to express political opinions, resistance, or protest. Amongst the white national population, choral music was often used to transport white national op political opinion. The result was that both tendencies made the gap between the different choral cultures large and white. After the fall of apartheid in 1994, with Nelson Mandela as a key figure, social and political leaders in South Africa were intent on laying the foundations of a unified nation and created the rainbow nation concept. <coughs> Without rejecting the Western culture, thanks, this search for a new national identity aimed while respecting the cultures of its different ethnic elements to integrate African and European heritage Christianity and Western modernity into a new cultural identity. The most famous thing is the South African national hymn, what, which you have listened to at the beginning of this little lecture. Uh, it's unique in the world that you put the previous white Urish hymn together with the black hymn of resistance in Kosi Sekeleli Africa, God bless Africa. And musically it's, it's congenial to put these pieces together, to put the past and the future into one piece of music. Choral music was now meant to help creating a new cultural identity. Choral singing and choral conducting in post-South Africa would therefore ideally be multi-ethnic in composition and nature. By involving the notions of difference, music should function as a tool for the formation, development, and expression of a new South African identity. I think it's unique to South Africa because of our history. So because we've gone through many struggles, um, apartheid being the biggest, and then coming out of that and now being able to sing in a choir with fellow black students and fellow colored students, which previously wasn't possible. So now we're really able to make music together post-apartheid. Looking at Germany, Germany is known as a choral country as well. And to make a long story very short, I think one of the most interesting contributions Germany has made to the world in the last 10, 14 years is the so-called Bastian Studie. And it's worldwide known because it's the first time that the assumption that there is a coherence between individual development, social behavior, and music making was proven. Here in Berlin, they had a case study, and they involved seven primary schools in Berlin. And one group was intensely <coughs> with intensive weekly music lessons and a control group. The results were that children which reinforced music and singing lessons showed measurable increase in EQ compared to the control group. They were better able to concentrate, and they were better of a better social behavior after this study. And for me, 
what's interesting is that especially children from a low social background, the poor ones. So they benefited above average. The main questions for society in Germany at the moment are not yet solved and unfortunately rarely discussed. Of what nature is the new German identity? We had this very unfortunate light culture debate. What are we aiming for in Germany? besides of constantly increasing our GNP. What are our ideals? What's the vision of my home country? How can we make use of the huge potential of multiculturalism to be found in this country? Nobody speaks about it. It's about being German. But we have about 7.6 people living in Germany, citizens of this country, who are not German. And for me, this is a potential, and it's a rich potential for arts and for culture. Let me conclude. It has become fashionable in certain political circles to talk about multilingualism and multiculturalism as if there were recent discoveries instead of what they really are, a condition of life as old as human species. So what we're doing here and what we're aiming for is essential for being human. What we do in South Africa is, please don't leave me, oh, it's such a pity, okay. We're going to the places where people have talent, where talent is unlimited. But we're going to the places, especially where there's no formal education. We're going to the townships, we're offering our services in the township. And let me s finish with one witness from this program. The thing that I learned and that is, will always stick in my mind is to know who you are. You must know where you come from. And, and in the future, you must always think back and look where you come from. So that's what, that's what um, I learned mostly and it's got, always going to be stuck in my head because when I came here, you know, like, you can, you can be a person, just know your name and stuff like that. But you, you sometimes just don't know your inner self. You don't know who you are inside. So here I learned, I learned to know more about myself. And, and I didn't even know my skills. There, there are things that surprised me that I got to know about myself here in the group. So I really, I really like that fact, the fact that you get to develop to know exactly who you are. And then, and then I also learned that in the future, um, um, our goal, like our vision here, is to, is to succeed, is to succeed in music, to succeed in art. So what, what basically um, I love about this is to learn who she is. What I basically love about is that here I learn who I am. Thanks very much for your patience. It's greatly appreciated.